How's it going guys? In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through two online Blitz games that I played literally yesterday, both in the Alakine's defense, being E4, Knight F6, and giving you my rather dubious Gambit, gambit -y recommendation to have a bit of fun against it. And I know you guys seem to enjoy it when I post videos of you know, me recommending dubious gambits. So we're going to continue the trend. We have the classic Alakine's defense. You just shove the knight around in the center, force it back to b6. And normally, the moves are knight f3, knight c3, or d4. But here, we're going to continue pushing the knight around with c5, force the knight to d5, and then play bishop c4. And we're attacking the knight. <clears throat> Black can respond in a few ways. But the main move is e6, which I'll be going over today. And if you guys want me to look at some of the other lines in this opening, then please let me know, and I can do in a future video. And here I like knight c3. This has been recommended in a Gotham course, I believe, but he kind of plays it a bit differently to how I like to, because after <coughs> bishop takes c5, I like to go d4, and offer up the pawn for completely free. He's just taken on c5 for free. But I get this massive center. And when my opponent retreats their bishop, the move is queen g4. Just attacking g7. In this position, it's better for black to retreat their bishop all the way to f8. Because it preemptively defends the g7 pawn. But it's tough to play. And got to be honest, I don't think I've ever seen anyone do that against me. And I've played this opening a lot of times. It just isn't a natural move. Bishop e7, everyone plays. And after queen g4, black has three options. He can go g6 to stop the attack. He can go king f8 to defend the pawn. Or he can go bishop f8 to defend the pawn. In this game, my opponent chooses g6. I go h4. You can play bishop h6 to stop black from castling. But not only can black play bishop f8 to try and challenge that and trade the bishops off, which I don't really want to do. You know, you get this kind of position. I kind of have to take, and I don't really want to trade the bishops, because I am a pawn down, and these dark squares are really weak. So I'd rather keep the bishops on. And... I want black to castle anyway, because I'm going to attack him on this side of the board. So I go for h4, I expect h5, and I'm happy to drop my queen back to g3. After d6, a lot of, a lot of people play b, uh, d5, by the way, in which case I like to drop my bishop back to d3 to look for potential sacrifices on g6 in the future. My opponent goes d6, and if I take... Then queen takes, he offers a queen trade, bishop f4, queen moves. It's just a bit uncomfortable, right? I don't want to give black any activity. The whole point of my e5 pawn is to suffocate the black position. So I just go knight f3. And I go, look, if you're going to take me, I'm going to take back. I'm going to maintain this bind on your position. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue attacking you. You're going to struggle to transfer pieces over to the king side to help with your defense. And I'm not going to struggle to do that. I'm going to transfer all my pieces to the king side and I'm going to kill you. And it's very difficult for black to play against this. In loads of openings that I play on my channel, I have a very similar c3, d4, e5 structure. It's a, kind of like a pet favorite of mine. I just love getting these positions. I'm happy to sacrifice a pawn for it if I can get this massive bind in the center and get my queen over to the king side early because it just stops anything from going to f6, which is how you typically defend yourself. So, d6, knight f3, knight c6. Knight c6 doesn't really do anything because this pawn is way too well protected, so I just castle. d takes, d takes. I'm not taking with the knight. So if I take with the knight, then black can trade for a star and get rid of one of my attackers. Because this knight 
is looking at g5. Also h4 hangs, which is another problem, because uh, black can get away with taking the h-pawn, because I've removed my rook from the h-file. So you take with the d-pawn, maintain the bind. Knight a3. I don't mind this. You're attacking my bishop, I'm going to drop my bishop back. This rook's coming to the d-file, and this bishop now supports it, and your queen doesn't have many squares. Bishop d7, rook d1, this bishop's pinned. Are you going to play queen c8? That looks kind of dubious, because you're removing even more defense from your king. And your king can't castle through a queen, and he's certainly not going to castle here. So, my opponent goes c6. This cuts off the knight's retreat. And I go, okay, this is out of the game now. Let's throw my knight on g5. If you want to take me, this bishop's coming to f6, and I'm going to win. So, queen c7, pressures e5, prepares to queenside castle. But if my opponent queenside castles, f7 is going to hang with a fork on the rooks. Like, um, after bishop e3, queenside castle, this is just a fork. Bishop e3 is also played with the intention of putting pressure on a7 to discourage black from castling. So, my opponent goes c5, which is a good move cutting off my bishop's scope on the diagonal. I go bishop d3, setting up some more pressure on the king side. Also, maybe I want to bring the bishop to e4. It's kind of not really doing much on e2. So, rook g8. Also, I have quite a simple threat of knight takes f7. And if the king takes, then the king's escape is cut off, and I'm going to mate you in a couple of moves. So bishop d3 is a big threat because these light squares are very weak because the queen can't get over there to the help and this bishop is trapped behind its own pawns. It can't get onto this crucial diagonal. Oh, I'm spoiling it. Spoiling, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. Um, so I go queen f4. Queen f4 isn't the best. I should go queen f3. It's the same idea to attack f7. But the difference? What's the difference? Knight takes... Ah, the difference is I can bring a bishop to h6. So that taking on f7, this pin isn't a big problem if black castles. Whereas queen f4... If my opponent queenside castles, and I don't have bishop f6 to attack this rook. That's instructive. Hmm. The reason I didn't put the queen on f3 was because I was worried about bishop c6. But maybe I shouldn't have been. My opponent goes rook g7 though, defending f7. And this is a big blunder. And I actually missed the move. The move is knight takes f7, and the point is, you're losing the rook. And I'm just going to get it for free because you can't defend it. You're just going to have to castle and give it up. And I'm up the exchange and a pawn. I miss this. I play knight e4, which I think is probably the second best move in the position. Uh, maybe not the second best, but it's high up there. Because I'm looking at the weak dark squares in the position. I missed the tactic of knight takes f7, so my backup plan is, okay, you've got all these pawns on light squares, you've been trying to defend your light squares so much, what about your dark squares? You also can't castle kingside. So my opponent castles queenside. I play knight d6 check, and the point is, if bishop takes, then e takes, queen moves, I get bishop e4 in. This is the only square for the queen. I mean, if she goes to b6, then I just get onto the b-file. The queen is basically out of squares. So I'll have moves like bishop e4, queen a4. c5 is going to hang at some point. The queen can't maintain defense of c5. And not only do I go up a pawn, but this pawn, the pawn that I am up, is a big problem for black. His king is going to really struggle to find safety. So... My opponent doesn't take. He goes king b8, which is the best move. I go bishop e4. 
Yeah, just just putting pressure on the black position. And I'm expecting bishop c6. I've also got five seconds. So worth bearing in mind. And bishop c6, bishop takes c5. And if you take the bishop, I can take, whoa, I can take here. And the king can't take because of this. Ooh, I did not see that. I was probably just going to take this. And then we trade and then it's equal? Oh, this hangs. Hmm. Maybe I wouldn't have taken then. I did have five seconds, so who knows what I would have played. Fortunately, my opponent goes knight c6. And after bishop takes c5, knight takes e5. I take, but my queen defends the bishop. And I have three defenders on the knight. My position looks a little bit loose, but all my pieces defend each other very nicely. Like, there's plenty of defense to go around. The rook is also under attack, and b7 is under attack. My opponent finds the best move, f6, attacking the queen, and making sure my queen isn't attacking the rook. I go queen d4. We have e5. My opponent's trying to get my queen off of the defense of the bishop, but he can't do that. Here, if he goes a5, I can just retreat to a3, and I maintain the defense. So I'm just up a piece, but I have four seconds. My opponent goes bishop c6. I take, queen takes, knight e4. I played knight e4 with literally, like, no, no time on the clock, like 0.1 seconds. Because you can see, I had two seconds after this move. And I get two seconds after every move. So I played, I, I, I almost panicked. I found knight e4 because I just want to trade, bro. I'm up a piece, just trade. And my opponent does. I take the rook first. Because if I take the piece, then there, there. My opponent can't take here because of mate. But after all is traded, I'm up a minor piece. <clears throat> Obviously winning. But rook takes d8 into mezzo. Means after king c7, queen takes, queen takes, knight takes. I'm going up a piece and a rook. Because after king takes d8, there's knight e6 check. I win the rook and the rest of the game, I mean, it's just very easy. My opponent resigns in this position. And, I mean... It's not, it's not worth discussing this bit because it's so winning. But the opening itself just caused Black so many problems on the king's side. And he struggled to find safety with his king ever. Eventually he manages to castle queenside. But his position's so cramped at that point that he needs to find some incredibly accurate moves to survive. And he just doesn't. He panics and, you know... This guy is high rated, he's a good player, but if you continually put pressure on opponents, regardless of whether you're a pawn down or not, they will crack. They will crack. And that brings us on to game two. So, again, same opening. Bishop c4, oh, let's turn this on. Knight c3, and here my opponent takes. I take back, bishop takes c5, d4. Bishop retreats, queen g4. So the same, I think it's exactly the same position. But here my opponent goes f5. Now, obviously this is a blunder because it just hangs g7. But I still like to show you guys this game because it was crazy. Like, it was awesome, man. So we have rook f8. I could take on h7, but I don't see the point. I go bishop e2 to threaten bishop to h5 check and checkmate so d6 is played so if i give a check now which i do the king can go to d7 remember this guy is high rated he's a good player so he's gonna find the best defenses in a lot of scenarios here i should be principled and i should play d5 just blasting open the center i do play this but not yet I go knight f3 first, knight c6, castle, b6, now I find d5, 
I didn't want to play z5 initially because I wanted to get my king to safety first. Because there are ideas of like rook g8 getting on the g file. I don't really want to give away the g pawn for no reason. So I get my king to safety and d5 explodes to center. Now black has three captures to choose from. He can take either pawn with the pawn or he can take e5 with the knight. Now, if he takes on e5 with the pawn, I can just take the knight. The knight's just hanging, so that's not an option. If he takes on e5 with the, I don't know why this is lagging, with the knight, then we can trade, and amongst other moves, the simplest is probably just d takes e6, and the king is drawn out into the center. My opponent chooses e takes d5, which is a bit more testing, because I have to find the move e6. The king only has one move, because his escape is cut off, and it allows me to bring my rook into the game. If the king now retreats, it moves like bishop g5 gang up on this bishop, and it's going to be very hard to hold on to it. He has sufficient defense for now, but it's going to be difficult. Because, you know, moves like rook h8 just hang mate. The king does not have escape squares. So my opponent goes knight e5, trying to block off my rook's attack. And if I take here with the knight, then I do have mate. Which I actually, for some reason, just didn't even consider. I don't know why. I didn't even consider that. I think I just saw knight d4 and was like, that's way too cool not to play. King goes back to d7. Whoa, rook takes here is a move. And if he takes back... Ooh. Black can only play rook f6 to stop this. Here, here, whoa. Okay, there's so many different mates. The king's just stranded. I go f4. Because I'd like to force the knight off of the defense of the e-file. And then I can put more pressure on the bishop. So he moves the knight to d3. Here I find a move I was very happy with. I find knight to e6. If my opponent takes the rook, I take his queen. So he can't do that. He goes rook g8. Because his queen has no escape. Right? He goes rook g8. If I take the queen now, then he takes on g7, I have two hanging pieces and I'm losing. So I have to move the queen. Rook h8, I take on f5. Now if I were to have moved the queen to like g7, queen g8, and my opponent escapes. My opponent manages to get the queen out, the bishop's under attack, I probably have to take and I just have a worse position because my attack's completely gone. It's, it's, it's no longer viable. I need the queens on the board. So after rook h8, I play queen takes f5, setting up this discovered check on the king. My opponent goes queen g8 because his queen's under attack. And here, there is one move. One move that leads to mate. I would suggest you try and find it be good to develop your own skills and the move is knight d4 check now you might be saying why not knight g5 because the king escapes right you can't let the king out of the box the king needs to remain in the box so knight d4 is the move because the king can't run to c6 and you might go yeah but the knight was defending d8 so the king can just go to d8 but then knight c6 mate. And the difference between the knight being on c6 and e6 is that on c6, the queen defends the d7 square. This bishop, the whole game, defends the e8 square. So the king can never run this way. And I mean, it's just quite a pretty checkmate. You know? it's uh, I, I just thought it was quite cool. Like I've got quite a few pieces hanging here. But that doesn't matter if all my moves come with check. So, I just thought it was quite a pretty game. You know, although my opponent makes some very 
very dubious opening move. It is difficult to defend the G7 pawn. Like I said, these are the only moves, and none of them are pretty. One weakens the dark squares, the other undevelops the bishop, and the third removes your right to castle. So I would highly recommend you give this opening a go. This position, you know, if you give me like a chess game and you go, okay, you can start the game from this position. The pawn down, you got nice development, nice attack, black's gonna struggle to defend himself. Would you take it? Personally, I would, any day of the week. That's just my play style. And I think it's a more fun way to play chess. So I'd highly recommend if you enjoyed the video and you want to maybe give this opening a go, then please, you know, show me some love. I'd really appreciate it. And check out the other videos on my channel. I promise they're not that bad.